In the next few videos, we're going to extend the concepts of equivalent circuits into uh, the phasor domain in terms of impedances and uh, phasor voltages and phasor currents. So to do that, um, we're going to start by looking at uh, source transformations, transforming a voltage source with a series impedance into a current source with a parallel impedance and back. And then we'll also extend the concept of Thevenin equivalent circuits to include phasors and uh, complex impedances. So by review, what we mean when we say two circuits are equivalent, we mean that they have, in this case, the same terminal characteristics. And by that we mean that an external circuit connected to a voltage source with a series impedance will experience the same voltage and current as that same external circuit would experience if it were connected to a parallel current source connected in parallel with an impedance. Now in both instances we're going to have the source impedance be the same value and what we want to do is determine the relationship between V sub S and I sub S so that loads or external circuits connected to either of these would not be able to tell the difference. So they have the same terminal characteristics. That means same voltage and same current. To accomplish that, the uh, this load here is going to experience the same V, what's referenced V12, the voltage from node 1 to vo node 2, in both these circuits. In other words, this V12 and this V12 will be the same. So to do that, we need to have the open circuit voltage, the voltage that you would experience if there was no load connected here, to be the same. In this case, since it's open circuit, there will be no current flowing through here, and the voltage V12 will simply equal V, the open circuit will equal V sub S. Down here, when the terminals 1 and 2 are open, no current is coming this way, so in this case, all of the current through the source is going, from the source is going through this parallel impedance. And the voltage that you would then measure here, this V open circuit, would equal just I sub S times Z sub S. From this, then, we can write directly what the relationship needs to be. In order for these two open circuit voltages to be the same, this VOC, which is V sub S, must equal this volt open circuit voltage here, I sub S times Z sub S. So in transforming a current source with a parallel impedance into a voltage source with a series impedance, the voltage source here would be equal to I sub S times Z sub S. And simply rearranging it, we can come up with an expression for I sub S. In terms of V sub S, that would be I sub S equals V sub S over Z sub S. So if we had a series voltage source and impedance, we could replace those with a parallel current source and impedance if I sub S here was equal to the quantity V sub S divided by Z sub S. We can get a little bit better feel for that by looking at what is referred to as the short circuit current. If you short this out here and call it I short circuit, we should expect to experience the same I short circuit, the same sh current through this short here. Well, in this circuit here, I short circuit, in other words, zero resistance there, the current there is just going to be V sub S divided by Z sub S. On the other hand, down here, with this being shorted, it shorts out the impedance, and so none of the current goes through here. And the short circuit current then would be simply I sub S, or I short circuit equals I sub S. 
Here we then see that in order for these two to be equivalent, I sub s equals V sub s over Z sub s, as we saw there.